Well, hello everyone, and it's going to be a top video today. You're going to love it. You need to watch this to the end. This is going to be a good one. And it all starts with the Stone of Skuna um, at uh, the coronation, and, and why is that so important for the king to be coronated on top of the Stone of Skuna, which lies underneath there. What's going on with that? It's because he's an heir to the creator of the Stone of Skuna, which is therefore a man-made stone. Um, I actually have a, like a like a Muslim friend, and he he was telling me that some Islamic scholar was saying that this stone was actually built by Solomon, and um, and uh, uh, many uh, Jewish people are actually trying to get it back to Jerusalem. And and naturally, my ears pricked up when I heard that this was built by Solomon because Solomon obviously high technology, man made stone. What's going on? We're going to get into it in this video. Let's get started. So. Um, we all know that um, this bloke here, uh, represented in the movie Longshanks, um, uh, wanted to destroy the power of Scotland. So what he did, uh, he thought it was it would be a very good idea to take their sacred stone, put it in a throne, and this is the throne that King Charles was recently coronated on. And uh, that's the stone itself. And uh, it, uh, it's a very interesting looking stone. It uh, looks, looks quite strange. Okay, let's, get, let's go further. And you see it's been, it's been carried uh, uh, specially because it's such a sacred stone, but no one knows why. Why would this stone be sacred? Why would it be important? And um, so the, the, the article on the Stone of Schooner has really increased. So uh, there's legends of orichalcum tablets found nearby, and you're going to say, Charles, orichalcum tablets. Let's read it together. Oh, and, and do you see how many slides I have to get through? You're going to love this. You're going to love this. Uh, because the, the Peruvian uh, stones are described in the Bible. You'll see why. On the 19th of November, as the servants belonging to the West Mains of uh, Dunasin House were employed in carrying away stones from the excavation made among the ruins that point out the site of Macbeth's castle here. Part of the ground carrying away stones from the excavation made among the ruins that point out the site of Macbeth's castle here. Part of the ground they stood on suddenly gave way and sank down to six feet, discovering a regularly built vault. So this was a letter sent in 1819 to the Morning Chronicle about six feet long and four wide. None of the men were injured. Curiosity induced them to clear out the subterranean recess when they discovered among the ruins a large stone weighing 230 kilos, which is pronounced to be of meteoric or semi-metallic kind. The stone must have lain here during the long ages since Macbeth's reign. Beside it were found two round tablets of a composition resembling bronze. Sounds like orichalcum. On one of these two lines, so the Scots are pretty sharp people, they'd know if it's bronze or not. They're saying it resembles bronze, okay. So someone's obviously made a hoax letter, um, making it the Atlantean, or uh, they really did resemble bronze. bronze. On one of uh, these two lines are engraved, which a gentleman has thus deciphered, the sconce, or shadow, of kingdom come, until sylphs in the air carry me to Bethel. These plates exhibit the figures of targets for the arms, whatever that means. From time immemorial, it had been believed among us here that unseen hands brought Jacob's pillow from Bethel and dropped it onto a site where the place of Schoon now stands. A strong belief is also entertained by many in this part of the country that it was the only representation of this Jacob's pillow that Edward's uh, only a representation of Jacob's pillar that Edward sent to, to Winchester, the sacred stone not having been found by him. Because they're also saying, hang on, this, this stone is just a red sandstone from obviously quarried in Scotland. The curious here, which are uh, aware of such traditions and who have viewed these venerable remains of antiquity, agree that Macbeth may, or rather must, have deposited the stone in question at the bottom of his castle on the hill of Dunsinane, where it has been found by the workmen. The curious stone has been shipped to London for the inspection of the scientific amateur in order to discover its real quality. Not sure what happened to that. Hmm, fun. And Stone of Schoon. What's going on? There is the Stone of Schoon. It's very important. Why? We'll get to it. There it is again. Yeah, scones. 
And if you look up scones, it says they, the, the origin of the word is obscure, but we're going to show you <laughs> what the origin is in a moment. Um, some say it's based on skun, that the place in Scotland, skun. So notice they look a little bit polygonal, which is uh, quite interesting because you, you sort of, and the reason they look polygonal is you, you kind of bake them together. Uh, you just sort of put them together and then they grow out into to different shapes and push against each other, uh, as you see. And they're also glazed uh, with egg as well. And um, you notice they sort of they sort of grow a lot like the polygonal uh, rocks. So I'm asking you now: Are these scones? Are these scones? And is the stone of scone special because it's named after something like this that may have been in Scotland in former times, which is man-made? And if you look up sconce, it's, it's something like this, but it's more than that. This is something you put in the wall. Um, it's more than that. A sconce is a fortification, a small detached fort or defense work as to defend a pass, a bridge, etc. To ensconce is to protect with a sconce. Mm. Do we see what's happening here? <laughs> Do we see what's happening? It seems the, uh, the Scots or the British or whomever, or wherever the Scots come from, southern Russia, which is Ukraine, obviously the redheads, have preserved a tradition that scones are somehow related to being ensconced, are somehow related to fortifications. Establish or settle someone in a comfortable, safe or secret place. And now we get to the stone of Jacob because it was said that the stone of Skun is the stone of Jacob. So why is that important? It's a stone used. You're going to be amazed. You are going to be amazed. It appears in the book of Genesis as a stone used as a pillow. Now, we, pillow, why? Why is it a pillow? By the Israelite Pharaoh patriarch uh, Jacob at the place later called Bethel, which I suppose sounds like battle. As Jacob had a vision in his sleep, he then consecrated the stone to God. More recently, the stone has been claimed by Scottish folklore and British Israelism. Okay, what's so important about a stone that he used as a pillar? And this, this, this passage I've highlighted here in the biblical narrative is actually um, a description of a pyramid being built. So it's in Genesis. Why is it in Genesis? Because uh, ancient technology, maybe uh, before or just after the catastrophe, that's why it's in Genesis. It's in the first book of history. Jacob was fleeing from his elder twin brother, Ezel, who he had tricked out of receiving his father Isaac's blessing of the firstborn. On his flight, Jacob rested in a city called Lush and used a group of stones as a pillow. And that makes no sense until you see that they look like pillows. Aha, uh -huh. they look like pillows. So the legend is, oh, because they look like pillows, Jacob must have used one as a pillow. And that is how the legend must have grown, because otherwise it makes no sense for someone to use a stone as a pillow. So there was something like that in the old world or in the new world, and it's found its way into the Bible. And now let's keep reading. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set and he took uh, he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. It sounds like a children's rhyme, doesn't it? So, so heap of stones and uh, pillows, Jacob used them to sleep. Okay, there we go. That, that's the heap of stones. Um, and he dreamed and behold, a and then that's describing a building technique, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Now, the only thing that reaches to heaven is when they were building the Tower of Babel. So he's describing the building of a pyramid, in other words. And the Lord stood above it, etc., etc., etc. And look, and thou and your seed shall spread out abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south. These are the cardinal points of the pyramid. So it's describing the pyramid religion right here. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. This is um, the pyramid blessing everything. So the pyramid religion is in the Bible right here. And behold, I am with thee, and I will keep thee in all places, whither thou goest. 
and I will bring thee again to this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Amazing. And uh, Stone of Skun was one of these stones, you, which was a pillow stone. So this is the, the, the uh, this is, and I didn't know this before tonight, that the pyramid religion is in the Bible. It's just amazing. Um, and uh, I, I looked up what does pillow mean in the Bible. And it, it, it can mean different things. It can be a quilt or a fly net thrown over the head or something. But they, they sort of think it means pillow. Pillow, stones. Thank you. 